everyone welcome to watch it paint it it is february 2019 so it's the game of the month time again so continuing that series that I started last month for the first time let me know again in the comments below if you like the game that i'm talking about if you've played it if you're looking at getting it and the video helps in any way shape or form and most importantly what your hotness of the month was i loved seeing all the games you guys are really into in january let's see if it changes come february Speaking of changes, to some extent, I thought I could just show Beasts of Balance again. Uh, awkward. It's still a family favourite. Maybe I didn't think this series through well enough in that you might just find that I play the same game three months in a row. Now, luckily, having said that, and I think that would make for a very, very dull series for you guys, but having said that, yes, there was a second game we played heavily in February, and that game is Flashpoint Fire Rescue in the board and cards i don't really know that company what else do they make now this is a thrilling game of fighting fire rescuing victims and teamwork and that is completely true this is a cooperative game i think it says for two to six players about 45 minutes of play which is actually quite accurate we've had some 30 minute games we've had some hour and a half minute games we're probably average around 45 to an hour but we're quite slow it is cooperative so which is weird because it says it's two to six but i don't see why you couldn't play this solo player if you want to play between two and six characters, I guess it would work fine as a solo game as well. If you're into solo games, I'm not massively into it, but this could be interesting. So this game for me, Flashpoint Fire Rescue is very, very similar, I think, to Pandemic. It might be just because it's cooperative, but instead of moving your specialist characters around and curing diseases, you're moving your specialist characters around and curing fire. It sounds the same to me. There's a few things which make this very interesting in comparison to Pandemic because we play Pandemic a lot, but I actually prefer this to Pandemic. I definitely think a few years ago Pandemic would, would have made one of these uh, game of the months, but uh, it's, it's it's too too late, too late. We've played it too much, but Fat Flashpoint is certainly up there. So let's have a quick look what's in the box. You get the rules. They're not too thick and they're not heavy. They're pretty simple to learn. We learn we learn playing through the like basic mode, and then we just added in it like add some rules in as you go through, and we learn in the basic rule game, which took us under thirty minutes. Then we played one game, and we were pretty much good to go now this is the player board you play on it's a single board it folds out it's going to take up all the space of the camera and i can't remember which side is which off the top of my head looking through the <laughs> through the lens but one side's like the friendly family version not that the whole game's not family friendly it's just slightly easier it's a few less rules and then you flip it over and it's double-sided oh, excuse me and it's slightly more complicated so i think this is the friendly side maybe i can't remember it looks simpler but it tells you all that in the rules speaking of the rules i will not go through all of the rules i will leave a link that's what walks you through it and i thought that was quite an easy to understand and follow video that's what i normally do and then i read the rules so let me know in the comments below how you like to learn games you watch a video or do you just read the rules i actually like to do both and watch a video first then read the rules then sometimes watch the video again just to follow along so that's the board. This is one negative I would say about the game. It feels like you basically got one board to play. The other one you're not supposed to play once you've learned to play it. So it's a bit the samey over and over and over and over. Bit, bit boring. There are a few expansions with different maps, which I do not have. Now, the premise of the game is you are firefighters. It has miniatures, guys. Oh, I'll drop one. Red's down. Red's down. Oh, yes, a few miniatures, six miniatures, one of each colour. And what happens is you have these fire tokens. You're basically rolling dice, a black, which is down one side, and a red down the other side. That makes coordinates. You plant fire each turn, I mean smoke, and if you plant another smoke on it, it flips into a fire. If you hit another smoke, it's an explosion, and fire goes sort of everywhere in the adjacent squares. Now from that, if it hits a, if it can't spread because there's a wall there, you have damage, and these are the damage tokens. And this is basically how you lose the game. Walls start getting damaged, and when they take enough damage, 
24, I think, once you run out of those, 24 points of damage. The building's too structurally unsound, and you've lost the game. The, what you're trying to do during the game is you're trying to rescue these little hostages, which are hidden, and some of them are false alarms, some of them are cats. Some Well, you still have to rescue the cats. <laughs> uh, some of those are people, and you have to rescue, I think, seven. And once you've rescued seven, you've won the game. If so many die or perish in the flames, you lose the game. If you take too much damage, you lose the game. Now, why? what I do prefer to Pandemic is if you... You, there's no deck of cards so you can't loot that's how we always lose pandemic when we run out of those deck of cards we always always forget that that is one of the ways you lose in the game and we miss misplay every time we don't play it often enough to remember that that's how we lose this game there's no deck of cards time limit you can keep going you can play it all day long if you can be bothered to manage the fire but not rescue the people speaking of managing the fire you have all these custom characters with all special abilities. So you get to pick one of these at the start of the game. You get to change them. You get to control a fire truck. There's a fire truck in here which can go around putting out more fire than a person can. And there's an ambulance to rescue the, the survivors you're trying to get out. So special characters. Speaking of special characters, driver operator, one of the funnest part of this game is one of our friends keeps being the driver and operator. It's basically driving the fire truck, supposed to put out 20 flames a turn he misses all of them entirely puts nothing out and then rolls the dice to spread the fire causes 20,000 explosions we just like to think he's actually spray spraying gasoline out of the fire truck and burning the building down i think this has got like a hidden enemy and we don't know it and he is it so back to the miniatures would you guys like to see these painted they're all the same so i'm not quite sure how to paint them differently so you'd still know which color you are because you you can pick any character and you just pick a color card to go with them. So a little bit confusing. There is an expansion, I think, which has bespoke sculpts for every specialist firefighter. Maybe I should pick up that. If there's enough interest in the comments below, I will pick up that. So leave some comments. Let me know if you'd like to see this painted. And as I said, let me know if you like this game, if you played this game, if you'd like to pick it up. Or what is your hotness of February 2019? Thank you all very much for watching.